Hi everyone and welcome back to the Southerners Northern Garden. So it's been about a week since my last video. We've had rain every day in Ohio nearly all day and we only had one day that was a break and if you know anything about the humidity in Ohio after rain it's pretty terrible. So I've not been able to work in the garden at all this week but I did want to give you some updates. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed for my last garden tour. The garden tour has over 22,000 views at this point and I'm approaching 5,000 subscribers which is incredible. I never expected anything to explode like that. So thank you for joining me. We're going to take a little walk around the garden and I just want to show you a few things that are new uh, that was not in my garden tour or some new things that are blooming, kind of the transition stage of some blooms and some other small things here and there. So follow along. The first thing to realize about the garden is since we've had so much rain, we've already had a downpour today. I'll put a clip to the side. Um, and I want to show you the Proven Winners Incredible Hydrangea specifically. So the Incredible Hydrangea is part of the Smooth Hydrangea or Annabelle series hydrangeas that are pretty old. Um, the Annabelle series has very, very weak stems, but you can see the Incredibles here are an improved variety of those. And they've been around for quite some time. They get around five, four to five, six foot tall and wide. And these were just pelted with rain earlier today. They're three years old and they have withstood all this rain. So they are looking great. In my garden tour, they had their white coloration. They've started to take on their little limey green looking color. And they'll stay this way for the rest of the season until they start turning more brown. Uh, I've showed you my daylilies. They're about all bloomed out now, but the clematis is still uh, producing blooms. This is the Stand By Me clematis I mentioned previously. In the back, back here, I will do a separate video on, but you can see I have some hydrangeas back there. So as you guys know, I love purchasing uh, clearance plants. Home Depot right now has all their shrubs in my area 50% off and I have purchased 14 um, Bloomstruck hydrangeas and seven uh, tough stuff aha hydrangeas that I will be planting around the garden. The Bloomstruck need a little more shade so I'm going to be planting them under the spruces. I'm probably going to be moving some hostas to do that and I'll take you along for that in the video. The mountain hydrangeas, the tough stuff, aha, will be placed along the fence after that's installed later in the year. So I'll take you up here briefly and show you what I did to keep these happy and watered until they get in the ground. So I've mentioned the beehive watering system. I think I have a link below. If not, I'll put one. Uh, it's created by Orbit and it's a great method uh, to set up drip irrigation, especially temporarily like this. So I already have the hub that goes in my basement that connects to Wi-Fi. So I actually was able to find on Amazon a new one. Um, actually it was used and I purchased it for $33. So it was like new basically in the box. The box was a little torn up. And then I attached drip to all these hydrangeas with the backflow device I went over in my drip irrigation video. And you can see all the hydrangeas have drip on them right here. So that's just dripping into the individual box. All of them are like this, all the way down the side of the house. This is how I purchase a lot of stuff, even though I can't get it in the ground right now. It's a great method to save money and get great amounts of plants at a discount to plant later in the season. Now's not the time you typically wanna be planting stuff in July, just based on your zone. Here, as long as you can keep it watered, July will work perfectly fine. So let me show you a few more things around the garden that are blooming that were not blooming in my last tour. This is a blue chiffon rose of Sharon. Uh, you can see here it has these nice double blooms here. Uh, they're a beautiful, very light purple, almost blue color. That's why it's called blue chiffon. Uh, it blooms typically this time of year. It's still got plenty of buds on it. And then when it blooms out, it'll be done for the season. This version is on standard. So if I zoom out here, you can see it's basically tree form. So this is only its second year in the ground. It'll fill out here uh, and get a little more sturdier stems um, in the next year or so. The Fairy Trail Bride Hydrangea that I planted up here has put on a ton of growth. I got that from Great Garden Plants um, and I posted the video a couple weeks ago. And the Lamium that I got from Home Depot for $2 a can 
has spread significantly. So you can't even see soil anymore. That's excellent. So at the end of the season, October or so, I will pop this in the ground and I will pop these in the ground because although they were listed as annuals, they will come back in my zone and they'll be a nice ground cover. I will probably stick them around the patio or somewhere else in my garden that I just need to fill out. Just as a quick update on my Pamela Crawford container, you can see uh, these were planted two, two and a half weeks ago and they're actually getting blooms on all the plants. All of these were clearance plants I got on discount except the gum farina up there and it was around seven dollars to ten dollars and everything's looking great. We're starting to get some trailing here. The sweet potato vines looking great. Super Tunia Royal Velvet, uh, Super Bina Sparkling Rose, that's what that is. And a couple more weeks and a little bit of fertilizer and it'll be looking even more amazing. These Proven Winners Mango Salsa Roses were bloomed out last tour, uh, but I just wanted you to see the different coloration here. So they come out this nice coral looking color. They kind of fade to a more purple uh, and they're putting on lots of new blooms right now. So um, it put out its first flush. These were new this year, so it put out its first flush kind of early uh, and now it's just now starting to rebloom. So um, you can see how many blooms it has on it right here. These are really nice because you can actually cut a stem and it's almost like a bouquet of flowers that you can take inside if you wanted to. These Proven Winners Tiny Tough Stuff Hydrangeas that I have around the front are just loaded with flowers this year. Tiny Tough Stuff is a mountain hydrangea. Mountain hydrangeas don't typically bloom on new wood, which means they don't bloom on wood that is generated in the same year of growth. However, uh, these bloom on old wood and new wood. So if you live in a tough climate, these were called tough stuff because the winter blooms or the blooms that come on old wood are very hardy, but it also produces on new wood. So you always have blooms during the season. Mine have bloomed a little pink this year. I wanted them to bloom blue, but I wasn't able to get that out of them. I will try in subsequent years, but I love the progress they have made in just one year. Just a little container update. This is the Super Tunia bubble gum that is absolutely massive. And then we have this fireworks grass in here, which is still chugging along, trying its hardest to outcompete this Super Tunia. I'm um, having to keep pulling the Super Tunia back, but it should catch up when it, the heat kicks in and it stops raining so much. I picked up this beautiful Ajuga from the garden center a couple weeks ago. I don't know the variety name specifically. If I can find it, I'll post it below or on the screen, but I, it's already spread significantly and I love the color. It is just, I'm hoping it'll fill the space between these alliums and just look excellent. For those wondering what mint this might've been, I remembered as I was recording the last garden tour, this is Drops of Jupiter. It's an ornamental mint by Proven Winners, and it's about to get some blooms on there. Um, I don't know how if it's gonna spread. Uh, I expect that it might spread some, but I'm hoping it's not gonna run away. If it will, or if it starts to, then I will probably be pulling that out of the ground. This isn't the best look of these daylilies right here, but this is Salome Peony Display. I will try and get some better video of this in my next video. We just had so much rain and daylilies do not like rain and do not hold up well. You can see the blooms get very thin here. So we still got some more blooms to go. So when it stops raining, I'll get some better footage of these. The roses are starting to make some of their second flush. This variety is Desdemona. It's a white rose, as I mentioned in my garden tour. The white roses I'm not loving as much because their blooms do get tattered quite a bit in the rain or when water gets on them but this is a very good bloomer if you have an area that you can keep it protected from irrigation or rain um, it would do great for you it smells excellent and produces a ton of blooms it's the first shrub rose reblooming in my garden this summer so far this plant is a pugster amethyst butterfly bush it's pretty much at its maximum height which is typically two and a half foot by two and a half foot it's been in the ground this is its third year and I absolutely love the color of the blooms on this and how it performs. It is always covered up by pollinators and these look excellent in arrangements as well. If you've never purchased a Pugster, I have one here. Uh, there's one up there around my Super Tunia bubble gum container. And then I also have a new one that I just purchased in white with the discounted shrubs I got from Home Depot. 
and I'll have to find somewhere to stick it in the landscape. It may go somewhere around the fence or the shed after those get installed. I will be doing a hydrangea tour later in the summer after my hydrangeas bloom out a little more. But this is the Zinfandel that I mentioned in my last tour that I wasn't too impressed with last year, but this year it's really beginning to show off. It's got these really large blooms and they will start becoming a little ombre for, to pink uh, here in the next few weeks as summer progresses and they will make some great cut flowers. The vegetable garden itself needs a little TLC right now. Um, it's just we've had so much rain and I haven't been able to get out here to clip and prune and uh, raise these cucumbers up. They're kind of trailing all over the ground. I probably have a cucumber in there somewhere that I can't even see. The kale needs to be probably ripped out or at least pruned up. It's gotten massive. I haven't tried any of it in a while and it might taste a little funny because of our hot days. But I am absolutely loaded up on tomatoes this year. Look at this. This is one tomato. And I just realized how big that sucker is. Uh, but I've got all these tomatoes. I will probably be giving some of these away to friends, family, and co-workers coming up soon because there are just so many uh, around here. My favorite cherry and the only cherry I grow now is blueberry cherry, which if you've never seen, they turn, they have these dark purple shoulders and then they turn red. They're a very acidic and tart cherry tomato which I really love. Uh, I don't prefer the yellow sweeter tomatoes nearly as much as I do these blueberry cherries. I'm still loaded up with peppers. I need to come out here and pick some of these. They're looking excellent. I actually have some varieties over here that I need to stake up. They're getting heavy from falling. This is corbachi. If you've never grown corbachi it is a great sweet snacking pepper and they look really cool too to give to your friends. And then I have some jalapenos and not a pinos here and this is the best i think i've mentioned my uh, peppers i've ever done um, these are massive i mean you can see how tall they are here they're at least three foot tall uh, typically my peppers don't do that good i had an amazing year growing them start seed starting them in the basement they were huge when i brought them out and they have really taken off and loved these earth boxes this year i've got a few dahlias here in my vigo garden bed um, i'm actually looks like i'm starting to get a bloom here these were grown from seed from floret uh, from the packet of the mix that she sent out in her dahlia book so i don't know what color they'll be they were open pollinated but it'll be really interesting to see what i get here and if i like them i'll save them for next year this rose here which is lady shallot i did get my first bloom out of it while i was gone it's about to put on some new blooms here. I just love orange and yellow roses. They're my favorite. And this is a great corner shrub for this little area right here. The Bobo hydrangeas have really come into their own. As I mentioned in my garden tour, they're one of my favorite panicle hydrangeas simply because of the amount of blooms they produce. I'll take you over here to the other side and you can just see the look I was going for here. These will get three to four foot tall and wide and you can see how bright they are. They will turn pink later in the season, uh, but there's a huge number of blooms on them. These are only one year old in the ground. So I got these as two gallon. I believe the Bobos come in two gallon around here and you can see how big they got in one year. The stems on them, since it's been raining, they are doing a little flopping. That will get better as they get older. Panicles do hold their blooms up very nicely typically, but with all the water on these blooms and the sheer volume of them, they can get kind of heavy until they dry out and then the plants will flop over. If it gets very bad, I will tie them up just so the stems can grow stronger throughout the season. And next year, the stems will be stronger that I don't cut back. So we won't have that problem next year maybe. But you can see, although there are a lot of blooms, these blooms are pretty large by themselves. And the stems, you can see how thick that stem is there. So to give you an idea of Bobo, it's a nice smaller panicle hydrangea if you like one to fit in a smaller space, three to four foot tall and wide, and absolutely gorgeous and full of blooms. This is my Liatris patch that I got from Costco and planted up last year in the willow bed. And it is consistently covered with pollinators, as I've mentioned. Uh, right now there's a bunch of flies out here, but see if I can get, there's always bees out here as well. So you can see this little, little guy right here, a little girl.
my Gatsby Star Hydrangea is putting on some fall color and becoming pink. Uh, I actually did not see these turn pink last year. I think they stayed, turned straight to brown because they were in their containers, but now that they're in the soil and getting a lot more moisture, they're doing quite well. The leaves, I'm getting a little color change on them, which seems a little odd to be getting at this time of the season but it could be going through some shock just from being transplanted in the ground. So it'll be fine. Um, it's looking great. Otherwise, there's no burn on the leaves. They're just changing colors a little bit. So it'll recover just fine, I think. The Pinky Winky hydrangeas are starting to go into bloom and you can see Pinky Winky is also a great panicle hydrangea. It's more open and the pollinators love it because you can get, they can get to the fertile florets easier. So you can see the little bee friend here. Uh, and these are one of the largest panicle blooming hydrangeas. So they start out kind of small here and it just continues to grow and get longer and longer and longer until the bloom is just absolutely massive. And then it'll start turning pink a little bit. I think I have one over here that's already changing. So here it is. See these florets down here at the bottom are turning pink and it'll continue to grow pink to the top of the bloom here. But these blooms will continue to elongate throughout the season. Uh, last year, this cat pajamas cat mint, I did not cut back. However, I might do it this year just a little bit. Um, Cat's Pajamas is quite good about continuing to bloom and the calyxes, which are the back part of the bloom, so that you have the bloom and then the tiny little th thing behind it is called the calyx, uh, is a darker color. So even when it's out of bloom, it still looks fairly nice. But to clean them up, it's already pushing some new growth in here. I will come back and just sh shear this off a little bit. Cheyenne Spirit Coneflowers are just doing their best. Surprisingly, these coneflowers were three by three inch containers when I got them last year. And to get this big in one year, I'm really impressed because I've not had another coneflower get this large this quick. But I've also not had coneflowers in full sun all day. My cherry chocolate hibiscus is going to start blooming here soon. Uh, we did have some blooms over there, but they've been hit by rain pretty bad. So I'll get some better footage of these, but just look at the inside of this bloom here. It's very beautiful hibiscus. And you can see all of these are blooms and it is just covered up. So I'll definitely get some footage of that at a later time. We got some more shots of daffodils here. This one's called Chili Sprinkled. So it's got a nice maroon color there. Look at all these varieties. Cosmic Traveler. I'm gonna have to wait until these bloom and there's not been any rain so I can get some better footage of them. This one is beautiful. I don't have a name of it. It's from the guy that grew and bred daylilies locally who retired that I brought home to my garden last year. My limelight hydrangeas are finally starting to put on buds and they're looking great. So this one recovered quite well, despite I didn't think it was gonna do very well this season. It's looking great and the standards are also putting on blooms. So before long, we'll have beautiful limelight blooms to cut and add to arrangements. So the last update I wanna show you is my Vigo garden bed. Um, I have been super impressed so far this year of how these have done. With all the rain, I need to come out here and tie these up. They're starting to fall over. We've got the small world dahlia here and you can see how pretty that is. It's very unique, very small, but it's great in arrangements. So I'm going to start coming out here and cutting some of these things, make sure I get everything tied up so it's doing well. And then over here, I have some more colors. That one's starting to open up. That's gonna be a pretty, pretty purple color. And then all these whites, which I have a lot of whites. And then this one is very nice but it is also one of the Eden Brother varieties that I will need to pull the tag and see exactly, match it with the photos and rearrange the tags down here so I know which ones I'm growing because they came in a packet uh, unlabeled. I do have two Chicago Hardy figs here, which since my last video have really started putting on a lot of growth. So, I'm excited that I will probably get figs this year. I may need to get some bird netting to keep birds away from that. This is the part of the season that the hydrangeas will start coming into their own. The perennials need to be cut back. There's a lot of cleanup to do um, to get things ready for the fall. So I'll be working on that stuff soon. There's a lot of projects that still need to be done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this 
mini garden tour, I guess. There's been a lot changed since my garden tour. Things are coming into their own. I've got a lot more things blooming um, and things going out of bloom and reaching their peak of the season. So uh, like, subscribe, and follow along. Thank you so much for the support that you have given me over the past week since I got back from Roots and Refuge Farm. I'm so excited to see what Jess does with Roots and Refuge 2.0. If you're not following Roots and Refuge Farm, there's a link below. Certainly check them out. Jess does a great job of growing food and teaching people how to grow food, and she's really passionate about it. She's one of my dear friends, and if you don't know her, you should. So thank you guys for joining me, and remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care, everyone.